In our first reading, Moses tells the Israelite people that eventually there will be a prophet like him. There will, there will be a prophet like him that God will raise up that the people of Israel will be called to listen to. So before we can go any further, we have to ask ourselves, what type of prophet is Moses? Well, Moses is one of the first. He is the first prophet that the Lord speaks to himself, calls him with a burning bush and the very awe-inspiring moment where he sends him to, uh, back to Egypt to free, his, the people from e to free the people from Egypt. And all the while, while Moses speaks, it's always with the authority that God has given him. And also, God doesn't just give Moses authority to speak. He gives Moses the power to do amazing things. Just a few examples, right? He puts the staff in the water and turns the water into blood. He puts the staff into the water and he makes the sea part in two. He puts the bronze serpent in the desert and so people who are bitten by snakes can be healed. Moses has done all these powerful signs and wonders only through the power of God. God works through Moses. So when we think about Moses as a prophet, we think of someone who has authority and power. So this prophet that's going to come later is going to be like him. And I think that word like is very important because to me it says similar but different. <laughs> similar but different. And so what does he mean? What, do we, what is Moses really telling us? Well, as I said last week, Word of God Sunday, when we think about the scriptures, remember the gospel is always linked with the first reading. And so when we, and, and when we think about that, uh, the scriptures, uh, something I said last week is the Old Testament always reveals and explains who Jesus is. And so we should already be thinking, what is this first reading telling us about Jesus Christ? And then our gospel itself is telling us that Jesus is this prophet. Jesus is the prophet who has the authority and the power. So how do we know this? How do we know that this Jesus is the one who has the authority and the power to do the things that we know he's going to do? Well, first of all, let's go back and think about last week. In our gospel from Mark last week, Jesus shows up on the scene. He says, repent and believe in the gospel. And then right away... He says, and he invites his followers to follow him. He says, follow me. And they immediately follow him. This is a big detail because it was only legal for Jewish people, uh, religiously legal, that is, for them to leave their occupation and family if they were going to become students of a rabbi and study the Torah. But Jesus doesn't invite them to follow, to study the Torah. He says, follow me specifically. In other words, there is something greater than the prophets in the scriptures here. Jesus is something greater than all those other things. And so Jesus invites these people to follow him specifically. So right away, there is a divine element. You can tell from Mark, this is the divine, this is the incarnate God. This is the incarnate God among us who has come and he's invited these people to follow him specifically. And then in our gospel today, when Jesus speaks, how did the people respond? Who is this who speaks with such authority, not as the scribes? That detail is also important because every scribe and every Pharisee after Moses would have traced their origin to Moses. They would have said, I learned from so-and-so and learned from so-and-so and learned from so-and-so who learned from Moses. And that's why, <clears throat> excuse me, and that's why I have authority. Jesus doesn't do that. Jesus does not claim to have learned from any specific rabbi. He just preaches with his own authority. So the question is, where does he get the authority from? It's just, what the, it's just exactly what the Pharisees are wondering. But Jesus has his own authority. Why? Because he's God. And Jesus can act with his own power. Why? Because he's God. So he's like Moses because he works with power and authority but he's different because Moses gets it from, the, from God, but Jesus has it in, a, in his divine nature of who he is. So this weekend, 
It's important for us to remember that our Lord Jesus Christ has the power and authority to make great things happen. He speaks and something great happens. One of my favorite moments in the scriptures, this is in the Gospel of John, Jesus is arguing with the scribes and Pharisees because they just, they just don't get it. And he's arguing with them about who he is. And he says, if you don't believe that I am from the Father, if you don't believe my words, believe my works. If you don't believe my words, believe the amazing signs and wonders that I've done. Because that'll prove to you I am from the Father. And so this is what I love about the Gospel of Mark, because this is... This, is God, this, this feels like Mark's whole mission to like help us realize that Jesus is who he says he is, that he has the power and the authority to, these, to do these wonderful things because he is God among us. And so in Mark chapter 2, one of the first things we'll see is Jesus, and I use this all the time because I love this story, but also because it's, it communicates so much about who Jesus is. People will bring a paralytic to Jesus, and Jesus will say to him, your sins are forgiven. And the Pharisees immediately will be upset and angry, and they'll say, who is this who says he can forgive sins? This is blasphemy. And Jesus will call them out for their doubt, and he'll say, so that you may know that the Son of Man has the authority and power to forgive sins, I'll say to this man, rise, pick up your mat, and walk. And he does. Jesus speaks, and something great happens. In Mark chapter 4, Jesus will be at the Sea of Galilee with his disciples, and there will be this raging storm. And eventually, because of the cries of those who are following him, he'll say, peace, be quiet. And the wind and the sea will calm. And then all those who are with him will say, who is this that even wind and sea obey? And then in Mark chapter 5, Jesus will be invited to pray over a little girl who has died. And he'll go to the girl and he'll say to her and he'll touch her, little girl, arise. And she will be brought back to life. Jesus speaks and something great happens. I think it's important for us, my friends, this weekend to remember that this Jesus who spoke 2000, 2000 years ago speaks to us today. And he speaks to us today with the same authority and power that when he speaks, great things happen in our lives. As an example, this past week, I was invited to Holy Spirit to help with their first reconciliation service. And one of my favorite parts about hearing confessions is when I say the words, I absolve you from your sins. Because notice, I say, I Stephen Durkee, just so you know, has zero power <laughs> to forgive sins. So why do I say I? I say I because God in some mysterious way has chosen to work through his priest to bring about the healing and forgiveness of sins to his people. So Jesus literally speaks through his, through his priest. So it's when the priest says, I absolve you. It's not Stephen saying, I absolve you. It's not Father so-and-so. It's Jesus saying, I absolve you from your sins. Jesus speaks, and something great happens. In a few moments at this altar, I'm going to again say, this is my body, this is my blood. Again, Stephen Durkee has no power to make that happen. Stephen Durkee is a priest where Jesus works through his priest speaks through his priest. He will make the Eucharist present to us. He will make himself present to us through the Eucharist at this altar. So when Jesus says through the priest, this is my body, that's what's going on here. Jesus speaks and something great happens. The question for us though is what about all of us? What about all these different ways in which God speaks to us? And I just encourage you, I just use these different moments in scripture. So if you're like the paralytic man, maybe you're, you have some physical suffering or maybe it's the, the sins of this world of your life that are weighing you down to allow Jesus to comfort you and to heal you, to speak to your life today and say, you are forgiven, you are free. Or maybe some of us are weighed down by the anxieties and storms of this life. And to hear Jesus say, peace, be still, I am with you. Or maybe some of us, we just 
There's a deadness inside, kind of like Lions fans for so long. There was a deadness inside. <laughs> and now we have new life. Praise Jesus. Had to get it in somehow. <laughs> but seriously, if there is any, anything that's making us feel a little dead and dry inside, Jesus can bring us to new life. Or maybe some of us feel oppressed by evil or we just feel like everything is going against us and we can see how Jesus has come in to set us free from all that is evil in this world. Moses said the prophet who is to come, we are called to listen to. If we listen to our Lord Jesus Christ, may we have the grace to see how he speaks to us and he acts with great power in our lives.